Hey there, it's Cami from the blog Tidbits. Thanks for joining me today. Now, it is getting a little chilly around here and school is back in session and I think that can only mean one thing. <laughs> Cold and flu season is well on its way. So anyway, I am trying to be very proactive and kind of equip our home with lots of natural remedies and herbs that will help us get through cold and flu season, hopefully like a champ. So I have talked on here a little bit about my journey with herbalism and learning about this. I am not an expert, but my followers have told me that they would love to hear more and come along with me. So today I want to share with you, let's see, seven ideas for things that you can make with herbs to help you get through cold and flu season. So let's go. Okay, some of these I have a lot of experience with and some I'm new to making and going to make for the first time. So I'm going to talk you through this and then if you would like to actually see me make these things, hang on till the end of the video and I'll I'll demonstrate how I'm making them and film them film while I do. So much of what I'm making is from my absolute favorite medicinal herbs book by Rosemary Gladstar. It's a beginner's guide and I am just clinging to this because it's so simple and um, effective. Everything I've made, made has turned out great. So first of all, the thing I wanna talk about that I have been doing and I'm very familiar with to help us through sicknesses is elderberries and I'm sure you've heard of them, but stock up. If you haven't already, <laughs> these are so great. I actually, um, have an elderberry instant pot syrup recipe on my blog and in my, my cookbook that I made with my sister. It's, I just make huge batches and freeze them in jars in the freezer and then pull out a jar anytime that I feel like we need to boost our immune system. That's what elderberries are great for. I would suggest you do not waste your time and money on the syrups that are made that you can buy at like a market and stuff, elderberry syrups. They're just full of fillers and you don't know how fresh the herbs are and I, I just don't think they're effective. So I highly suggest you get some dried elderberry herbs and I will link the herbs that I have bought and the sources that I go to to get any of the herbs that I'm showing you here. So be sure and check the description below for that. But I stock up on these, get a full jar full to get us through the season. And I will just, if I'm in a pinch and I don't have the syrup made up, I will just make an elderberry tea for me or for my kids or whoever needs it. That's a big immune booster, but I found the key is you have to take it frequently. So if you're doing the syrup, you wanna do it every two or three hours. And the earlier you can get on um, taking elderberries, as you start to feel like you might be getting a cold or flu, the better. Now, if you want to even make like a stronger, more immune boosting tea, I combine elderberries with echinacea herbs. Both of these are like immune boosting super powers. <laughs> so you can make a tea and combine that. I often do echinacea, elderberry, and then some peppermint leaf just to add a little minty, refreshing flavor to the tea. And I love this, my kids love it. And I feel like it is really effective. Like it has made a significant difference in the severity of our sicknesses that we get. And I feel like if I'm on it early enough that I could almost prevent um, what's, what's bothering us. So definitely a few herbs here that I recommend for teas and for syrups. All right, next immune boosting idea for you is what this book calls these cold care capsules. I have this jar full and we went through them. I only have like five more left, so I definitely need to make more. So I wanna do that today. Um, but these cold care capsules, they have in them, first of all, echinacea root powder. We've already talked about echinacea, major immune boosting um, properties in here. And then golden sill root powder. And I need some more of this. I, I feel like if I remember right, I bought just a tiny bit cause it's kind of pricey but it is in a lot of the immune and um, cold and flu support recipes that I found. So it's kind of some 
powdered gold right there. <laughs> but, um, and then marshmallow root powder is in here, which there's a lot of interesting benefits to marshmallow root. Don't confuse it with the fluffy little sugary buffs that you find in the grocery store. Um, and then also cayenne pepper, and you probably all have this, but this is a wonderful warming um, and immune supportive herb, actually, which is super fascinating. So you kind of follow this recipe that's in this book. It's just like one part to one part to half part. Anyway, so you, I put all those powders in a bowl and then I just bought these glycerin capsules and I'll just put the powder in there and it's like a little pill and I just swallow it down. So my kids don't love to swallow things, so I mainly use these cold care capsules for myself or my husband. And oh my goodness, they work so good. So it says like at the sign of a cold or flu to take two every two to three hours for up to nine days. Um, but I have had phenomenal success with these cold care capsules and they're just super convenient and easy. Um, sometimes you, when you're not feeling well, you don't feel like making a tea or something like that. And this is just really easy. You can get right on it. You can take it with you um, easily to just swallow them down when you need to. So I have had a lot of success with these cold care capsules and I definitely need to make more of those. This next recipe idea is combining like all of my favorite herbs right now. And it's called a headache and stress tea. Um, so really great for to have on hand all the time but you know particularly when you're sick headaches seem to come with that and i have found this to be very supportive especially if i can take it or drink some of this tea every two to three hours when i'm stressed or have a headache or not feeling well so this combines one part basil leaves and i am so proud of this jar because this is from my garden a lot of these i've bought because i didn't have a garden yet or have grown these yet but this sweet basil is all from my garden. So I'm super proud of this harvest and know that these herbs are as fresh as possible. Um, I didn't crush them up. I've heard that if you're harvesting your own herbs, it's best to keep them whole and then crush them as you're about to use them because it kind of um, preserves the essential oil that's in the herbs. And then when you crush them, it releases them. So you get max benefits from growing your own herbs and keeping them whole like this. So basil is super great for headaches and tea um i can attest to that and then she also suggests to put in lemon balm and i've gone through a lot of lemon balm this year and i'm excited because i'm just about ready to harvest my own lemon balm it grew really good so i'm going to use up this and then also get my own lemon balm dried and stored for the winter and and then she suggests in this tea you can add lavender and or chamomile and this is lavender from our own little harvest this year. And I, I just um, love seeing that and feeling the pride that I grew this and it's ours. And then chamomile, I hope to grow someday in abundance. But for now, I just bought the dried herbs and I love chamomile and tea. It is just so relaxing and calming. So these four herbs are so great to have on hand and to throw into a nice warm tea when you're not feeling well. Okay, the next few remedies I want to talk to you about have to do with helping us when we have a lot of congestion or sore throats, which just seems to be the name of the game for cold and flu season. So these sound like they're very supportive. Um, first of all, now these aren't herbs themselves, but they're derived from herbs. There are a few essential oils that I highly recommend you have on hand during cold and flu season. And the first one and most important to me is eucalyptus. It is so great to open up the sinuses. What I like to do with eucalyptus is I'll boil some water and then um, put it in a bowl and then put a towel over my head and just a drop of eucalyptus and you just breathe that in <laughs> slow and full breaths and this will just open up your sinuses and help a ton. And I think it helps with avoiding um, sinus infections because you're getting all of that out. So definitely, definitely get some eucalyptus oil um, these are from Rocky Mountain Oils. I really like Rocky Mountain Oils because it's not an MLM company. You don't need to um, sign up for anything. You can just go and get the oil you want and be done with it and they're priced really great. So get some eucalyptus. Another couple of oils to have on hand is this Immune Strength. If you're familiar with Young Living, they have one called Thieves, which has 
um, basically the same oils in it. So this is great to add with the carrier oil and rub in the bottom of your feet, maybe on your lymph nodes and your wrist. Um, I'll do that definitely with my kids when they're sick. And then flu time, I think is a new one they put out and it's basically everything in immune strength, but some added frankincense. Um, so you could get this one and I love frankincense. That's my favorite oil hands down. So grab some of those for some support that way. Now these other two remedies that I wanna share with you are great for sore throats. And I haven't tried these yet, but I'm really excited to make them and have them on hand. So this first one is called Echinacea Spray for Sore Throats. Again, it's out of this book. Um, and she combines an Echinacea tincture, which I need to make. A tincture is when you combine herbs with alcohol or glycerin, and um, the alcohol will extract and preserve the constituents found in the herbs. So I need to do that. I need to get me some alcohol and make a tincture. And tinctures take a while, just like vanilla extract. So um, I wanna get on this right away. But so once you have the Echinacea tincture, she says to combine vegetable glycerin or honey. We have lots of fresh honey, so I'll be using that. Water and then um, a few drops of peppermint essential oil. And she says this spray is cooling, refreshing, and healing for sore throats and infected or sore and infected throats. So that is something I want to make to be ready for this season. She also has a recipe that I'm really intrigued by called a good gargle for a bad throat. And it is using sage. And I have some sage from my garden that just smells so good. I've dried it and I can't wait to use it um, and hopefully get more before the season ends. But Sage is a drying herb, and so it can be great to kind of dry up those that excess mucus and fluids that are happening in your head when you're sick. Um, she doesn't recommend it if you're nursing because it can dry up milk, so just thought I'd put that out there. But this gargle combines the dried sage with salt, the golden seal root powder again, cayenne pepper, and um, apple cider vinegar. And here's what she says about this one. She says, this is an effective gargle for sore throats. It doesn't taste particularly good, but it works so darn well that it's easy to get people hooked. So I want to make this and have it on hand for sore throats because I hate sore throats. <laughs> so let's make that up and see how it works. All right, finally, the last remedy idea I wanna share with you for cold and flu season is one that I've heard about a lot, and it is called fire cider, and I have been wanting to make this for a long time. It combines onion and garlic, which are all super great for the immune system, so oddly enough, and then what I need to get is freshly grated ginger root and horseradish root, so I'm gonna to run to the store and get those ingredients, then you have your apple cider vinegar, honey, and cayenne pepper. And this is something that you put together in a jar, and then it needs to um, sit for three to four weeks in a sunny window. So again, this is something I wanna get made up right away to get us through the season. It is basically an herbal vinegar, but with really potent medicinal benefits. She says it's actually delicious. Use it as a salad dressing, and be sure to save some for medicinal purposes. So I wanna make this herbal infused vinegar to have on hand. I've heard of a lot of people having great success with this, lots of cool stories that I've heard from Fire Cider. So anyway, this is something I'm gonna make up. If you wanna stick around for this video and watch me make those, then feel free. But if you want to just get this information and the links, go ahead and check out the description below. And I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoy Follow me along on this journey of herbalism and discovering how to help our families more naturally. So thanks for watching and be sure you're subscribed so that I can send you more inspiration for the keeper of the home. All right, let's get cooking.